Hello, I'm Catherine. Thanks for joining me in the studio. I've done two videos already where I've been working on this quilt, which I'll link, and um, I've done pretty much done the finishing touches, so I'm just going to go through those today. And at the end of the video, I'll do a more detailed close-up of all of it so you can really see the details. It, although they are all separate pieces, I wanted when somebody looks at it for it to read just as one piece. And these, these pins are temporary. I'm going to find a more invisible way of connecting it to the wall. Um, but I hope you'll agree that it kind of looks almost what I want. The effect I was trying to go for was that they are in a cabinet. So I wanted these to be slightly proud of the other pieces and to look like they might be a frame or shelves or something like that. And I could have done them just in plain fabric, but I thought it was quite fun to... I have so many pieces of fabric that I do samples from, and when I'm having a printing session, you always end up with much more than you use in the piece you've got in mind at the time. So they go in a big stash in one of my drawers, and then, and then when I have an idea that I think they could be used for, they all come out, and I have quite a lot of fun sort of sifting through them and deciding what I'm going to use. And I have a lot, because this is a theme that recurs again and again, both um, the natural world, but also how people have observed and recorded and their scientific work on the natural world and cultural work as well. I had lots of pieces that um, played into this same theme. And so what I did, I used the same felt that I used as backing for these pieces. I actually doubled it up so it was nice and thick and this was just a sample piece and I have put these bits of fabric round them and then I put them up on the board there's a it's a bit of a kind of pretentious word I audition them which basically means you just put them in place whatever you're doing you know you might be putting two colors it's a bit like when you hold a color up and see if it suits you auditioning is just seeing whether it works whether it's producing the effect that you want so I put them up as they were. I decided they looked a bit, they needed a bit more dimension. I didn't want to do really dense stitching like on these pieces, but I wanted to do some stitching. So you can see what I did. It's a little bit difficult to film close up when I'm stitching. And I did this all with three machine embroidery, which is when you just don't have any of the traction and you move the cloth around. And I'm going to do a video just dedicated to that because it's a really useful technique to have. And it takes a little bit of getting your head round, but once you've got it, it just gives you so much potential. I don't know how well it shows on here. I did this piece. Some of these pieces, I actually wrote the names of some of these things. So I've got... Um, Plantago Major, which is a plant, uh, plantain, which is the scientific name for this plant here. And I've got the scientific name for the marbled white butterfly, which is Melanagria, it escapes me now, which is Melanagria something, and Primula auricula, like this one I did. I did it, I deliberately did it in a pale fab, in a pale stitch because I just wanted it to, to suggest it. All the time I've been thinking, I want these to complement the main pieces, but not be too distracting. And I've, I've worried a lot about that. So I decided to do pale thread. So only if you like go up. I quite like doing that. It's a bit like, even if people, I did a, I did a whole piece about the black and white, um, the marbled butterfly. And um, I did. I had prints on it that were of knapweed, which is this plant here, because oh, I've still got a few threads hanging from it. That's why it's not completely finished. Um, and I wanted to include them because they are the uh, plant that the butterflies lay their eggs on. But I didn't sort of spell it out. I didn't sort of say that in the. And it kind of. I, I like the idea, it pleases me most of all. I do most of my work to please me, which might be a bit egotistical, but you know, you've got to start somewhere. But I also thought somebody who did know that might recognize it and I quite like that. So even though these might be a bit difficult to read, somebody who perhaps knows the name might be able to pick it out. And um, it just gives a little bit more texture, a little bit more interest to these pieces here. 
So I did actually, um, and I'm not really worried too much about the back on these. Um, thing is, I doubt very much, I mean, I wanted to have these as separate pieces, partly because I thought if people were interested in them, they might just want one piece and not want the whole thing. If somebody, by any chance, wanted the whole piece, I would mount it onto one big piece of fabric, I think, and, and make it all much neater at the back. But I'm not going to worry about that for now. So when I got these pieces, I, so I covered them in my various prints, I did the free mach machine stitching and then when I put it back on the wall it seemed a little bit too distracting because there's so much, because these, I mean I like them because they're graphic, um, but oh, there was almost like too much going on with them. So what I decided to do is a technique, to, you know you can use, there's so many sort of media that you use on paper that you can use on fabric as well. And you'll see me using um, marker sticks, which are oil sticks, and I used um, ink tents, both the pencils and the pastels. And if you actually want to set them, you can mix them with a little bit of fabric medium, and then, and with the oil marker, after a couple of days, you can iron it, and then it's completely, um, nothing's going to happen. You can even wash it, it be be fine. Because I don't think these will ever be washed, um, I didn't need to do that. But what I was trying to do was just sort of knock back some of the extreme colours. So I've put quite a lot on this black here just to sort of dull it down a bit. And I think I've got the right medium. I mean, another thing you can do is that when you've stitched and you then go in with the sort of mark or it sometimes, I think it might show more on this one here, it, um, it picks out because where you sew is going to make a little impression and what's left is slightly raised. So if you go over it with a sort of flat edge of a pastel or something, it's only going to pick up the raised bits. So it can actually add to the texture and dimension of your piece. And I, I like to do that quite a lot. Um, so I think I'm happy with it now. I'd slightly worry that it's, um, it is still a bit too distracting. I usually get my other half to do you think this or do you think that and he's actually very helpful in giving me a sort of another eye because when you've been working on something so long you can't always see the wood for the trees so yes yeah, so these are the finishing touches I got to find another way of I think I'll just use pins without the heads on them I need to get some of those so that I and I'll, I'll make this much neater so that actually for my exhibition it's going to look like one cohesive piece. So I hope you enjoyed watching that and you'll join me again soon and look out for the free machine stitching video. I think even if it's not something you've thought about it's quite, a, quite an interesting technique to watch. So thanks so much for watching and join me again soon.